So Elon Musk had a rather stunning interview in which he discussed the future of artificial intelligence. It's been a while since we've had Elon Musk give us his thoughts and ideas. So I'm going to do a deep dive on this interview and explain to you many of the things he spoke about. So in one of the first clips, Elon Musk actually talks about how AI's capabilities have been rapidly expanding over the last year. And he gives his predictions for the year 2025 with what he thinks AI will be able to do. And I've got to say, it is a little bit concerning, but also quite exciting. I think at this point, it's obvious to everyone that AI is advancing at a very rapid pace. Yes. Um, you can see it with the new capabilities that come out every month or every week, every week sometimes. You know, you, AI at this point can write a better essay than probably 90%, maybe 95% of all humans. Say so write an essay on any given subject. Um, AI right now can, can beat the vast majority of humans. Um, uh, if you say draw an image, draw a picture, um, it can draw like, um, if you try to say mid-journey, mid which is the aesthetics of mid-journey are incredible, it will draw, it will create incredible images uh, that are better than again, like 90% of artists, objectively the case. And it'll do it immediately, like 30 seconds later. We're also starting to see uh, AI movies. So you start seeing you know, sh short films with AI, um, uh, AI music creation. Um, and the, the, the rate at which we're increasing AI compute is exponential, so hyper exponential. So there's dramatically more AI compute coming on online every, every month. Um, you know, there seems to be roughly, I don't know, the, the amount of AI compute coming online is increasing at like, I don't quote, roughly 500% a year, and like, it's like, that's likely to continue for several years. The, and then the sophistication of the uh, AI algorithms is also improving, so we're bringing online a massive amount of AI compute, and also improving the efficiency of the compute, and, and, what, the, and, and like what, what the AI software can do. This clip was actually rather fascinating, because this touches on something that a lot of people, I don't think they understood when reading the document situational awareness. Now, if you're unaware about the document called situational awareness, this is essentially a document that slash is a PS PDF that was widely controversial as it makes some bold claims about the future of artificial intelligence. One of those claims is that it says, as we get into the future, there's going to be numerous different points of acceleration for AI. And some of those are the increasing compute capacity, as well as the ability for algorithms to get even more efficient. And this is exactly what Elon Musk is talking about. I'm not saying he's referring to that article slash document. But what I am saying is that he's also reiterating what others have said. And I know some people have tried to quote unquote debunk that document, but it's quite clear as day that we are seeing consistent efficiency gains as well as an increased level of compute with regards to these different AI systems and their capabilities. So it's, it's, it's quantitative and qualitative in, in improvement. Um, so, the, you know, I, I might, I think next year we'll, you'll be able be able to ask AI. And what he actually said there before I cut off this clip is that you'll be able to ask AI to essentially make a movie for you. That's around 10 to 15 minutes. And I do believe that there are companies that are working on that stuff. And it's not going to be long before we get that level of quality and coherence. I mean, it was only the other day that we literally got Meta's movie gen, which is remarkable. Although it's quite expensive, I do think that the cost will come down in the future as efficiency gains are made and as more compute comes online. Now in this next clip, this is where Elon Musk actually talks about how Grok 3 is going to be in terms of the capabilities and a few things that he's working now, on. Now, if like optimization is probability of misgendering is zero, no, no humans, no misgendering, problem yeah. solved. Now we're back to Arthur C. Clarke, who's exactly. pretty prescient. Yes, so that's why the most important thing is to have a maximally truth-seeking AI. That's why I started XAI and that's our goal with Grok. Um, now people will point out cases where Grok gets it wrong, but we try to correct it as quickly as possible. So if you didn't know, Grok is Elon Musk's chatbot that he's been working on with X.AI. And one of the things that he actually has said that was pretty crazy was that he hopes that this model is going to be the best AI by the end of the year. So it will be quite interesting to see if that does happen. I know that there is likely to be Gemini 2, Claw 3.5 Opus potentially, and maybe even Google's Orion or GPT-5. So there's some fierce competition in the AI markets right now. Now, this is one of the more interesting clips because this is where he actually talks about super intelligent AI and the risks that come with that. Now, Elon Musk has spoken about this on a lot of of occasions, several, several occasions, dating all the way back to 2014. In fact, that was the reason, you know, one of the reasons that he, you know, started OpenAI was for it to be open source so that everyone could view it, make sure it was safe, 
And of course, now we have, you know, different companies and different individuals working on many different closed source pieces of AI. But he talks about how super intelligent AI, it's pretty difficult to handle that complex problem. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where we want, obviously. Is there um, any way, I guess, to set limits on the decisions that machines can make that affect human lives and make certain that there's some trigger in the system that inserts a human being into the decision-making process? Well, there, look, the, the, the reality of what's happening, whether one likes it or not, um, is that we're, we're building super-intelligent AIs, hyper, like hyper-intelligent, yeah. like intelligent, more intelligent than we can comprehend. Yes. Um, so I'd liken this to like, let's say you have a child that is a super genius child that, that you know it's going to be much smarter than you. Then, well, what can you do? You, you can instill good values in how you raise that child. Yes. So even though you know it's going to be far smarter than you, um, you can make sure it's got good values, philanthropic values, good morals, you know, honest, uh, you know, productive, that kind of thing. Controlling, at the end of the day, I, I don't know if, I don't think we'll be able to control it. Uh, so I think the best we can do is Make sure it grows up well. So yeah, there's no controlling a super intelligent AI. We just have to hope that it has our values and ensure that it will do within the realm of what's humanely acceptable. So, I mean, it is quite a, you know, hard problem. And, and this is where Elon Musk also talks about his P doom, which is basically his percentage of the world ending thanks to super intelligent AI. It's not as high as you might think, but it also isn't incredibly low when you consider the fact that this means everyone on earth is dead. Uh, so I think the best we can do is Make sure it grows up well. You've been saying that for a long time. Yes, I've been saying it for a long time. Yes. Are you still as worried about it as you seem to be two years ago when I asked you about it? Well, I, I think that like, my guess is like, look, it's 80% it's, it's <laughs> likely to be good. Maybe 90. Um, so you can look, think of the glass as 80% full. Um, it's, it's probably going to be It's probably going to be great. But there's some chance of annihilation. And you'd say the chance of annihilation is 20%? 10 to 20%, something like that. Now. This is where we get onto some of the more interesting parts again, because this is where Elon Musk actually talks about Sam Altman and OpenAI. He says a few things that might ruffle a few feathers in the AI community, but you have to remember that it was Elon Musk who started OpenAI a few years ago, not a few years ago, it was actually a really long time ago. And of course, the original mission of OpenAI has completely changed and Elon Musk certainly isn't happy about all of this. How concerned is Sam Altman about annihilation, do you think? I think in reality, he's not concerned about it. I don't trust OpenAI. I mean, I, you know, I started that company as a nonprofit open source. Yes. The open in OpenAI, I named, a comp I named the company. Yeah. OpenAI as an open source. Um, and it is uh, now extremely closed source and, and, ma and, and maximizing profit. So Does risking I, I don't understand how you actually go from being a, an open source nonprofit to a closed source for maximum profit organization. I'm missing... I well, think, but I, Sam I, Altman I'm, got rich, miss, though, didn't he? At various points, he's claimed not to, to, to be getting rich, but he's claimed many things that were false. Um, and now apparently he's going to get $10 billion of stock or something like that. So... Um, I don't trust Sam Altman, I, and, I, and I don't think we want to have the most powerful AI in the world controlled by someone who is not trustworthy. And sorry, I just don't. I mean, but that, you know. that seems like a fair concern. Yeah. But, but you don't think, as someone who knows him and has dealt with him, that he is worried about the possibility this could get out of control and hurt people? He will say those words. So now, this is where Elon Musk also dives into some interesting topics about how super intelligent AI might actually outsmart us. You see, previously it was humans that were better than AI at chess, but now we have a situation where AI is pretty much god level, and sometimes when you think it does blunders, it does something and then it completely checkmates you in ways you didn't understand. If AI did, if it became clear to the rest of us that it was out of control and posed a threat to humanity, would there be any way to stop it? I hope so. Um, I mean, if you have multiple AIs and ones that are, hopefully you have the AIs that are pro-human be stronger than the AIs that are not. Battle of the AIs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that is how it is with, say, chess these days. The the um, the, the AI chess programs also are vastly better than yeah. any human. Um, and incomprehensibly better, meaning like we can't even understand why it made that move. <laughs> right. we why they're so why. good, right, yeah. We don't, we don't even know why it made that move. It'll make a move, we don't even know why it made the move. Um, and in fact, some of the moves will seem like blunders, but then turn out to checkmate. Um, and for, for, you know, for, for a while there, there was, there was some, uh, the, uh, the best human chess players with the best computers could beat just a computer. And then 
it got to the point where if you added a human, it, it just made everything work. And then it was just AI, it, it's just computer programs versus computer program. Um, that's, that's where things are headed in general. Then of course, we do have AI in retirement. Now, this is one of the things that I think is one of the most interesting because many people, including myself, I, you know, I find myself constantly having debates on how society will be after the advent of AGI slash super intelligent, how people will, you know, have jobs and how the economy will work. There's many interesting concepts that are floating around, such as UBI, post AGI economics, many different things that are going on there. Um, and Elon Musk, you know, subtly touches on this. And I think it's a, you know, a refreshing perspective. Make sure we instill good values in the AI. What's everyone going to do for a living? I mean, in a benign AI scenario, that is probably the biggest challenge is how do you find meaning if AI is better than you at everything? Um, that's the benign scenario. That's the good news? Well, yeah, but I guess, you know, for, for a lot of people like the idea of retiring and... Really? Are you, are you looking forward to it? <laughs> no, not me. I, I'd like to hope... Uh, I'd like to think that I... I'd like to be... Do, do useful things. Um, Don't you think it's a universal desire? It's 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 not it's not universal in that th there are certainly I know many people who prefer to be retired that they prefer to um, sort of have not have responsibilities and engage in, in leisure activity. And, I mean, we're, and we're on the cusp of, of this. As now, interestingly enough, Elon Musk at the end here actually talks about AI and regulation. Now, AI and regulation is pretty tricky. We had the SB one hundred forty seven bill which was highly controversial. Some people are saying that, oh, this is going to kill AI and, you know, it's going to kill regulation. And some people are like, okay, I'm actually in favor for this because this doesn't seem that draconian. I am someone that's, you know, slightly in favor for this because I don't think it's that insane. There are a lot of worse things that you could have in terms of the bills. And I'm not going to go into all the details. It's quite boring, but just, I think it's just enough safety. But interestingly enough, what he does talk about how like he made these predictions a few years ago and some of them seem to be coming true right now. And the thing is, is that the government didn't take them seriously then. So I'm hoping that, you know, now that there is this global consciousness created by ChatGPT, where people can truly understand its capabilities, that we understand exactly how AI is going to develop in the future and hopefully build the right regulation surrounding that. Meaningfully regulating AI, which will eliminate like the purpose for most people's lives and could kill us all. It's a little weird. Yeah, I think we should have some. some <laughs> but why some, don't we? Some, I guess something above nothing. <laughs> In that range, yeah. But why don't we? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I all the way back, like I, 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 I during the Obama presidency, um, I, 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 you know, I met with Obama many times, but usually in like group settings. The one one-on-one -on -one meeting I had with Obama in the Oval Office, I said, look, the one thing that we really need to do is set up an at the beginnings of an AI regulatory agency, and it can start with insight, where you don't you don't, you don't just come shooting from the hip, throwing out regulations, you just start with insight, where you, the, the AI regulatory committee uh, simply goes in to understand what all the companies are doing, and then proposes rules that all the AI companies agree to follow, just like, you know, sports teams in the NFL, you know, you have proposed rules for football that everyone agrees to follow that make the game better, you know, so that, that's the way to do it. Um, but nothing came of it. What did he say when he said that to him? I mean, he seemed to like, Kind of agree, but but also people didn't realize what 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 the where AI was headed. That so yeah, that's why he's saying like you know um a lot of people didn't realize where AI was headed, and I've got to be honest, if it was like maybe four or five years ago, I certainly wouldn't have realized this too at that time. You know, so AI seemed like some super futuristic yeah for thing. sure sci-fi basically so I'm like I'm telling you this is gonna be smarter than the smartest human and. Um, my predictions are coming absolutely true. And uh, so we need to have some insight here just to make, you know, make sure that these companies aren't cutting corners, um, doing dangerous things. But it, it, Google kind of con controlled the, the White House at that time, and, and they, they, they did not want any regulatory. Well, that's it. I mean, you never see politicians turn down opportunities. So let me know what you thought about Elon Musk's view on AI. Do you think he has a rather fascinating perspective considering his involvement? in the scene from many years ago. I think this interview was quite refreshing considering we are moving very rapidly into the future. And if you have any comments down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this video.